Hello and welcome to the 145 Rural Podcast, where we are here to strengthen music careers and communities one song at a time. And now here's your host, Jacob Wing. Yay! Hello and welcome to the 145 Podcast, episode number four. And it's great to have you here. Today's episode is really going to be focusing on you and what makes you, you. Boy, that was fun to say. Uh, Really happy to have you with us. And we're going to start with a little bit of a downer. And it's just going to speak to that thought in your brain where it feels like, at least sometimes, everything has already been done. That nagging feeling that, why bother? Somebody's already doing it, doing it better, been doing it longer, been doing it faster, so on and so forth. And the really bad news, and like I said, hate starting this on a downer, but it's true. Pretty much everything at this point has been done. So where do we go from here? It's not the end of the world. The good news is there's a lot to take from that. And we're going to start with just kind of going deep into this idea of of why. And we're going to start with the song Hallelujah. And... Nearly everybody's heard a version of the song in some way, some form, and everybody has a version they like. It really does. It's a great song. It speaks to everybody on some level. Uh, the reason I bring it up is after doing a little bit of research on this song, it has been covered over 300 times in records and in performance. That's absolutely insane. 300 times minimum. Just think of how many different versions of that song there are out there. And right now, everybody had that song come up with their head, and I guarantee you not all of us had the exact same song in our head. And the reason I'm bringing this up, and the reason I'm going deep into that, is that you don't have to look at it as every version of this song is exactly the same. Everybody has done a different version of this song 300 times because they have felt that they had something to add to that song. I mean, if we just look at the list of people who have done this, uh, the likes of the Pentatonics, Bob Dylan, Willie Nelson, Katie Lang, Chester Bennington from Linkin Park, just to name a few of the huge names that have done this. And I didn't even mention my personal favorite, and it's just my opinion, but the Jeff Buckley version is amazing. And of course, you can't discount Leonard Cohen's own version, which is just beautiful. But the point is, everybody did this same song, and they all took on that as a, a project or something to express themselves because they all felt like they had something to add to it. And in the end, most of them did. But... The point that you have to take away from this is that anybody that did this or anybody that you saw or heard that gave something to it added something unique to it. They gave it from their perspective. They shared from their feelings, from their their inner core of what made them so unique and gave it to that song. And that's kind of what we're doing today. We're going to take some time to talk about Finding what makes you unique. What is your sound? What is that little piece that you have that nobody else has? And how to dig that out of yourself and apply it to everything you do and go from there. So we're going to start with talking about how to drill down deeper. And that is not always as easy it seems and it's sometimes scary but it's really important if you're moving forward with a career in music or even just want to develop further in your sound and and take this a little bit further that you have something to define what makes you yourself what gives you that special spark and and the way we're going to do that is we're just going to do a little exercise basically a little thought exercise and even that if you want to take it a little further, I would really suggest grabbing a a pen and paper or pulling up a notepad on your computer, something that you can physically look at, and especially having something like this written down or in a place where you can reference it, you know, multiple times as you're putting 
your creative things out there as you're putting, you know, your music, your images, your building a social media, like anything that you do, this should be a part of it in some way. Um, so what the b first thing to do as we're pulling out that pen and paper or writing it down is to make a list of 10 things, 10 of your favorite songs. Simple, right? It's important that you write down which song it is and who it's by. You want the artist for sure. And from there, we're just going to break it down piece by piece. You know, hopefully you've got some space or somewhere to write in between those and just pull up on whatever listening platform you use and bring up that song just casually. Like you're going to just take a normal listen to it and just listen to it through a couple times. Like the first time, don't, don't write anything down. Don't do anything really just listen let yourself feel like you've always felt maybe think about the first time you listened to it and why it made you feel the way it did maybe think a little bit more as to as it grew on you what started to stand out to you what makes you feel like this song is that next level it connects to me on on this level because you know a b and c so as we're making this list I just wrote down a couple a couple suggestions as you might take a look at it and, and go that deep. And the first thing that I was thinking about, something that we all really, especially when it's something that uh, we, as a culture, we've decided that this is this is something that's the plateau of what music can be. We like to point out the voice. You know, that's what our, our personal instrument really draws us into an artist or somebody, so a certain performance is it, you know, is it smooth and does it just really soothe your soul or is it grating? It's so unique that nobody else can make that sound. Uh, I just off the top of my head, you know, uh, if you've ever listened to Smashing Pumpkins and Billy Corgan, who you really dove deep into that nasally tone and it's just, just so amazing. Like it grinds at your soul. It's so great. Or... Uh, Louis Armstrong, throw way back, his amazing raspy voice that was just so iconic that the second you hear it, you know exactly what that sound is. Or Bob Dylan, another great example. Somebody who just the cadence that he used and the way he used his voice as part of that song, as part of conveying the feeling and the emotion of, of what he was saying is just super 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 unique another thing to think about another way to look at things is or a reason it might speak to you personally uh it would be the writing style um or the the composition just the way the song's put together you know so we hear day after day song after song sometimes things start to feel repetitive you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, a little bit of bridge. And it's the system that we use for a reason. It gets the message across. It's a great way that we tell stories and pass on things, but it can get real repetitive if it's done the wrong way. Um, but sometimes a song will speak to you because it's just out of that normal. It's outside that box where it's just, I've never heard something like this before. And holy crap, I really, really like this. You know, it's, and some people are just great at taking the idea and the concepts of the song, still getting the story across, still getting a, a hook in there that pulls you in as a listener, you know, getting that songwriter checkmark list done, but it wasn't done in, in a conventional way. And they can continue to do that. Uh, I wasn't just going to do examples at the top of my head. If I just had to grab some, one of my favorites is Beck for sure. If you listen to any of his stuff, he can be all over the map as to even what genre you would, define him in but the songwriting is just he really has a feel for what part needs to come next this needs to be said again this doesn't need to be done again it's getting repetitive he just he really has a knack for letting the song be what it needs to be to get that feeling or emotion across um, another thing that can come across and give you that that unique idea is a, a playing style uh, a lot of bands groups or songs out there have to be conveyed with some kind of instrumentation behind them be that you know guitar some kind of stringed instrument piano just bass 
Uh, some are good enough to do it with just their voice, but still there, there's that style that can be really unique that you can pick up on that makes who you are really stand out. Uh, there's many examples of this. Uh, playing style is just something that really is important and knowing what makes your style stand out can really push you forward in front of the millions and millions of songs being put out every day. We all have examples in our head of somebody that plays music that we can just hear it for a couple seconds of whatever it is and instantly know that this is this artist right here. Uh, being a huge fan of uh, blues and guitar rock and anything in that genre, the second I hear a guitar solo, I can instantly tell you that that is Stevie Ray Vaughan or that is the one and only B.B. King, that the way only he can play, or, or Albert King. Especially uh, blues artists are very, I mean, they're really playing the same thing a lot, especially uh, in scale-wise and, and note-wise. But the way they say it, the way they uniquely get that message across through their music, through their fingers, can really define who they are. You know, that could be a great way to to differentiate yourself or define yourself hi there and welcome to the ad break we're just going to take a moment to let everybody know about our community of growing members and if you'd like to be a part of that just look at the info below and there will be a click there for an email sign up to join in and get your voice heard as well as you're enjoying this content please join our patreon at patreon.com slash the numbers 145 world there you can join any of our groups and you can add to the discussion of what topics we will choose that will help you and hopefully future members of our groups, as well as join monthly Q&As and other such benefits. Again, that's patreon.com slash the numbers 145 for rural, and we look forward to seeing you there. Now, back to that regularly scheduled episode, and enjoy that content. Thanks again. Another good one especially in the modern age, is performance. Uh, if you're looking to really pull yourself apart from those around you, the way you put on a show can really define who you are. and It can really move your career up to that next level because you're doing something that the others aren't. You're drawing people in for other reasons that they just want to see what's going on. They want to see what dance moves you're doing or what choreography or you know, what kind of things are going to happen next. You know, performance is a huge part of everything we do. And there are some that just take it to that next level. And, and maybe that's something that you do. And maybe that's the reason that if you went straight to your computer and you're like, I love this song, and you pulled it up on YouTube because there's a visual component to that, that they can really touch you uh, in a live performance on a one-to-one -one way that nobody else can. You know, maybe that's that's part of what, defines you, your sound, and who you are as an artist. Uh, another one is the vibe or the feeling, and that really plays to using all these things that we just talked about in a combination. Uh, you go to certain concerts and you know that it's going to feel a certain way, If you or, you know, especially certain genres. You know, here's how I'm going to feel and I can't wait. Uh, you go to a country show and you're going to th think deeply about your life and where you're at, your position, your love, your your care, and and what means everything to you is really great at a country show and and dancing and getting you know just getting that feeling. It's always a couple songs that just really gets you moving. Um, if you go, you know, to contradict that, you go to like a jam band show where you're going to go to Fish or you're going to go to you know, a Dave Matthews band or something like that where you're just going to be extremely laid back. There might be some some substances taken or something like that, and you're just a completely different vibe. And some groups are just defined by that vibe. The Grateful Dead were in that, that wheelhouse of giving you that feeling. These are just, you know, examples, but there's so many, many different ways to look at that and you know there's more examples of what can define you but these are just some things to start with so as you're going through your list of 10 different songs 10 of your favorite songs just kind of keep that in mind you know and then start 
start listening to more things, you know, not just these songs as you've got this list and you kind of understand what, what really reaches out to you and maybe how you want to convey to others, use that list, just start developing it. And now that you've had that list and then you've taken it for a bit and you've, you've worked with it, give yourself, you know, a couple of weeks, a month, just to kind of start mindfully thinking of things like this, that becomes a great time to go back and pull your songs. If even if you have them record them, recorded, sorry, sit down and, and take a listen to those and do the exact same thing. Start to pull them apart as to why did this song reach who I wanted it to? Why did it not get across? What parts of this do I really love? And what parts do I not really care for now that I'm starting to think in that way? What parts may not have been there for everybody else, but just for me. There are songs that we write as writers and performers that are just for us. And we like to share them because we know there's going to be somebody out there who's going to connect on that level that's going to feel that way. But if you're trying to grow an audience, you really got to start hammering those other songs that, and those other things that are really connecting and more open to everybody. You know, you got to have some of those sprinkled in, but if you're doing those steps with your songs and being honest, it's a great way to, as you move forward, as you're doing more writing, you can use that to, to really start to get that in there and, and define who you are to really set yourself apart. Um, and at this point, if you've really gone through the steps and you've done this, and it's, it's not that hard, super easy, you should be able to sit down and develop an elevator pitch. And just for a quick summary, an elevator pitch for anybody who's never heard the term uh, is just a pitch that you would give to somebody if you wanted to ask them for something or tell them something that you could convey in the trip of an elevator. So, you know, quick 30 seconds is really what you're like, 30 seconds to a minute. You know, if you got that that big boss that you want to give that that idea to that you can try to set yourself apart. You get in the elevator and you throw your ideas out really fast. If you don't have that defined in your head already, it's just going to come out as a jarbled meth. All the words will just spew out your mouth and you won't get it across. You won't seem calm and collected. It will seem like you're scrambling for the ideas and you're not, you're not ready to take on whatever your, or whatever project you're trying to say. And the same goes in, in the music world. When somebody comes to you and says, Hey, I hear you guys are out there playing. What what do you sound like? Or, you know, what makes you guys different than everybody else? Or tell me about you and your band. You know, if you've done the work here, it should be really easy to put in a couple sentence of here's who I am. Here's what I'm about. Here's my sound. You know, just really quick. And having that moving forward, uh, it really does make a difference. And then... At, as you go forward and you've got that elevator pitch all set up and all done, you can start applying that to everything you do from that point forward. So as you're getting together your website or, you know, just for example, you know what your sound is about. So that can kind of define what kind of artwork you're going to be doing because you know that this is your sound. This is the kind of fan base I'll be going towards the people that might enjoy my music kind of have this feel and then you can design your logo around that, you know, and it becomes basically your branding, which is the big thing today is building a brand. You've already done the legwork to get there, to do, to do all of the things that seem overwhelming. You've really done most of the work already and you know where to begin. So, and then as you go forward from that, there's this great thing that as you, as you've defined who you are, you defined your sound. And, you know, as, as it changes and, and you do all that stuff and you add things here and there, you go in and you're going to record and, or write this song. You can just use what you've developed as who you are and pick and choose where to put it. You know, if we're going to use an analogy, you just use cooking. You know, you go in and if your Eunice is the salt, everything has to have that component in it, right? Everything you eat has to have some kind of salt in it in some way. Otherwise, it's not going to come across as good. Even if it's sweet, it has to have a little bit of salt just to contradict it, to give it something that's going to make that stick out a little bit further. So 
if it's like in cooking and just think of it the exact same way, I'm going to make this, this song and I need to sprinkle in just a little bit of myself. You know, you don't want to go too hard. You don't want to go too far. Then it just becomes the thing that you want to avoid if you're going too heavy with putting too much of this in there, too much of who you are. It's never a bad thing, but if it's consistently done, it's, you become that one trick pony, that person that's just, this is who they are. This is their sound. And you can never get out of that. People don't want to go any deeper to find out who you are or to your, to all of your songs or to come to your shows because they already kind of know it's all the exact same thing to them. So that's why it's great to have, and you know where it is, but just, you need to use it sparingly or, or really just know where to apply it to really give it that unique sheen, that, that that one of a kind thing that only you can do. Uh, a great thing that I just want to get across here is just a quote that I read or saw the other day. And I think it really speaks to what we're talking about here. And that is that you and your you-ness will shine through. It doesn't matter how many times the song's been done or played or covered. It may have been done, but never like this, never like you. Just keep that in mind. Understanding what makes you and your sound unique and special is what's going to help you move forward and is really going to make every task you need to take on a little bit easier. And that's why it's here in the beginning. That's why it's part of the fundamentals that we're starting with is that as you pull back and as you try to add to the foundation that we're building, you've already done a lot of the legwork right in this. So I would really recommend if you have the time, if you can, just take a couple minutes, like I said, write it down, listen to the songs as you drive, as you do your day, as you work out, whatever you're doing, and pull from it what you can. Help yourself to find what you want to be and what you want your sound to be in the future. And I promise you, this will really help. Your you-ness will shine through. So thanks again for listening. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to talking to you guys all again on the next episode. So we'll talk then. Okay, bye.